and and do that on a and i was not doing that before mm. but it was but since i was determined to get this through it to myself i could do it consistently but the bigger support was from my family because uh, especially from my wife and the extended family because here is a patient who has just come back from hospital and now he wants to run outside and it's dark outside when he steps out we don't know where he is running what would happen what if he falls down on his chest again is just recovering and it's a lot of fears right because because this is just so i think it helped a lot that my wife gave me a lot of support and strength ah. it has family my children and all otherwise i would have not been able to start on this journey mm-hmm. at all because because everybody wants their freedom right to okay. do something and all but when you are in a role where you are the only breadwinner who is just coming bouncing back it is very important for the family to also say okay he can do it let him do it and because i am every time i step out it was very difficult because i myself am very scared uh, of what is happening and suddenly there are no doctors monitoring you uh it's a it's a phase where it's it's a it's a sport where you're not you don't know much and uh, of course and it's like in mumbai city running on on roads also is not very easy yeah. and it's it's end of monsoon and then it's very hot in october so it's the weather is also not something that is helping you okay. to to do that it's not some it's not like a spring or autumn or something in the western hemisphere where you can still train and the weather is okay you are you are just either it's a monsoon or it's very warm temperature mm. but the bigger battle was the internal battle to conquering the demons in my head to so that i can do it yeah so at the race day it was it was but the good part was i was prepared mm. so uh, the confidence level that i had while i took the first step in the race was quite high because okay. when uh, because i because i had done the 18k i knew that i could just do another 3 kilometers more than that and i would finish the marathon so so being well trained is an extremely important uh, factor uh, because there are a lot of people who show up at the race by just running one week prior to the marathon and say they are fit and they'll be able to do such a thing mm. because uh because they hear so much about running and they participating and they are younger they feel that they physically they can just okay they can just walk a little bit or in the last stage do it but when i finished the race i the medical tent was filled full with uh younger people yeah. getting getting uh, with a sprain or getting themselves treated yeah. whereas a guy who is just come had a surgery was had a, a spring in a step at the finish line <laughs> so so that is how the body is so uh, it's so amazing that uh, it just mind over body you know i could just control all the fears in my mind and with the support of the family yeah. and it 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 was like uh you can do anything wow. so that and once the marathon ended the group disbanded actually because wow. they train only for marath mumbai marathon from september to january yeah by then i was addicted uh, to, running. to running because like i said it made me feel very good about myself Got it. so when i came back from a run my energy levels were very high my day at work was very good i the the kind of the the feeling the vibe inside you is so positive yeah. when you come back that even the family started realizing oh he's happy let him be happy when he comes back from the run that is that's, better yeah i mean that's that's just amazing danish because i think um that transformation you know from going to having that diagnosis to doing the surgery and then completing that half marathon 6 or 7 months later i think it's you know kudos to you for taking on that challenge and doing that but you know what you mentioned about the body being so supportive 
And I know in a lot of your posts, you mentioned that consistency is the key. It's something you need to do day by day, and then you will see results over time, right? But it's also a chance for your body to adapt to this additional challenge. Because in a lot of ways, our body tries very hard to not mess up. You know, because we were teaching our grade five students about the human body and we were learning right. about the different systems. And, you know, we have one possible malfunction in our whole life and we think our body is not working well, right? But in so many ways, all the other systems try their best to work so well for you. And, you know, it's so important with food, exercise and sleep to make sure we regularly take care of, um, you know, our body in, in that sense. And I think what you did after, and I'm sure, like, uh, like one thing I'd also like you to comment on, because in your book, in the first chapter, the ninja, you mentioned that the, uh, uh, the diagnosis uh, related to the heart condition was related to genetic factors, right? And it was related to stress. So can running actually overcome some of these genetic factors that all of us have you know, and that's something we don't really have a say on. And I know there is research that says that leading a healthy lifestyle can overcome even certain genetic conditions, or at least reduce the chances of it, if not completely mitigate it in terms of risk. And yeah. I'd like you to comment on that, Vananjay, but also what has running taught you about life? You know, what has running taught you about how you can be a better human being? And maybe tell us a little bit about the other races you started running after that first one. So maybe question one and then question two. Then. Yeah, thank you for asking the first question. In fact, I should have touched upon it uh, because that's a key thing also because uh, I need to give a little bit of background about myself. Like my, my, my father had a heart uh, condition uh, when he was in his 50s. So... At the back of the mind, I knew that I had to be a little careful about this disease. So uh, I had turned vegetarian uh, since my marriage. Or when I was a student in Northeastern, I was I became a vegetarian. I I I was to smoke earlier, so I gave up that time also when I was in in the U.S. Uh, and I used to go for morning walks, etc. before the surgery also. So mentally, I thought I was doing everything possible uh, to avert this kind of a genetic or at least delay it uh, a, a little bit. Right. Because uh, at the back of the mind, you know that something could come up here. Mm. And this is a family history here. So I thought I'd done everything possible. Uh, I I am I am a social drinker. I I very rarely I have a little bit of wine uh, when there is a pass. So uh, there were no symptoms or something to show that you know there was something lurking inside. Mm. And uh, also uh, basically, I didn't used to get my physical done immediately or uh, something like on a regular basis, and I should have done that. Hmm. But uh, my blood pressure was also, when I got the heart attack also, it was not way out of parameters. Hmm. Cholesterol levels are a little higher, but not alarmingly higher. So, my bo so when my uh, angiography was done hmm. uh, before the surgery, that's when the doctor had said that, you know, the like how you said the body itself is such an amazing machine that I had five big blocks, uh, heavy blocks in the arteries, but the body was preserving itself because there was a web of collateral arteries around the block. Hmm. So it was like a web of small, 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 small uh, uh, vessels that have come in. So when I had the heart attack, these, these little bit capillaries kind of protected the heart muscle mm. from damage, severe damage. Mm. Otherwise, the damage would have been more severe. So this is how the body protects you if you are leading a healthier lifestyle. It is in a self-preservation mode if you don't abuse your body and if you are taking care of whatever little. But yes, uh, genetics does did play a role here. 
and but i would say lifestyle also played a role because i was not into any sports or any physical activity and like i told the weekends were meant in pleasing the family yeah. and going out or something so the physical activity was not there as to what level i should be doing just taking a morning walk leisurely walk is not really something which i can call a, a physical activity for a young person so yeah work stress is the third factor lifestyle uh, hereditary and i think work stress is a deadly combination to right. get a heart disease but uh, if you if you are in control the body does help does right. does help you a lot in fact my heart muscle was saved uh, to a large extent by the by the lifestyle that i wow that's that's amazing you know that's i think that's so inspirational for young people and even anyone uh, you know in their mid 40s and mid 50s listening to this podcast i think what your journey shows tananja is that even if you don't do it if you can start off for 2 minutes you know even walking for 2 minutes then go from there and make it 4 minutes then go from there and make it 5 minutes i think we underestimate what we can do in the long run and overestimate what we can do in the short run you know we feel like we have to do everything in one day but if yeah. we push it out over like 5 months or 6 months maybe we can do something really magical 